Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at sequencing, reflections, and translations. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment about the lesson below. Alright, take a moment and write these two objectives down for this lesson. Alright, while well, you guys finish, I'll just read them. I know a reflection across a line followed by a reflection across the same line results in the pre-image. And then the second one, I know that sequencing rigid motions matters. All this last one is saying is that uh, the order of the transformations will change the location. So like the last one with the translations, it didn't matter because we were only doing translations. But with these other ones, reflections and rotations, it's going to change quite uh, drastically actually, which we will see. Figure A, that's uh, this one right here. It has been translated along vector BA to get this new figure A prime. Describe a sequence of translations that would map figure A back onto its original position. So what sequence of trans translations specifically would we use? Talk about that with your partner in 30 seconds. So on this one, you would translate figure A along the vector BA, like it said. And then to get it back to the pre-image, we would take it and translate it along the vector AB. Figure A was reflected. This is figure A still. It was reflected across line L, resulting in uh, this reflection A prime. Describe a sequence of reflection that would map figure A back into its original position. So if we reflected figure A over line L to get A prime, in order to get it back to the pre-image, we would just reflect it back over that line of reflection to get our pre-image A. Uh, remember, this was one of the objectives, so this is kind of crucial to know. If we ask you to do this on the test, which I kind of assume we will, you're just going to say you're going to reflect it over line L and then back over line L to get the pre-image. So we know this is a reflection because the first one was a reflection and the only way to undo a reflection is to reflect it back. Now, I mean, we could go into more detail on this if we look deeper at the points. So for example, you could connect these two points and we know the line of reflection is always halfway between those. Uh, we could connect any other two corresponding points like these two. And again, the line of reflection is halfway between them. Uh, that just helps us to know that the line of reflection was the original. So I know that not only was the fir first reflection over line L, but the second one has to be because these two midpoints are along line L. Talk about this one with your partner. Can translation along the vector BA, a figure A, undo the transformation of translation vector DC, a figure A? And then why or why not? So you'll want to write a sentence on that. So this is asking, if I translate the figure along the line BA, does the vector DC return it to its pre-image? All right, so most of you guys know this. The answer, of course, is no. The vector DC would not return figure A back to its pre-image from a translation along the vector AB. Uh, we would have to move it back along the vector AB instead of BA for that one. Um, the vector DC is not even in the same direction, so it wouldn't work. On this one, we're not worried about five. Let's just focus on number four. Let there be a translation along the vector AB and then reflect it across the line L. All right, so the first thing I would do on this, if I were you guys, is to trace figure S right here. I don't know, let's see if I can do that a little bit better. That looks okay. And I'm going to uh, translate it along the figure or the vector AB. Let's translate that along that vector. So on my paper, I would just slide that straight down on that vector right there. And this one would be S prime. What you do is reflect this over the line L. So some of you guys remember this. Some people did especially well on the test with this. 
is uh, the line that connects this figure to the line of reflection needs to be a 90 degree angle. That's a perpendicular relationship. And then we're going to continue that line just in the other direction this way. Now again, this wouldn't be perfect, but this would give me at least this point right here. Next, I'll do it with this point as well. So I'm about that far away, 90 degrees. I'm going to go in the other direction, same distance, which would give me about that point right there. And then finally, this one also. We'll go in the other direction. Again, I'm trying to make that 90 degrees the best I can, but uh, that's about the best I can do, maybe. And then I get this figure. So we'll clean this up a little bit. Now this, now this is important, important for us to know, know just because, because if we, we had started, started from, from the, the beginning, beginning on this thing. thing. Alright, so that last figure was S double prime for us after the two transformations. If we had done a reflection first, and then the translation, uh, we probably would have got something like this. I would have gotten this green shape, which would have then been, or something like it, S double prime. The reason why we're showing this is to show that it's a different position. Now, in the beginning we did a translation, then a reflection. And clearly doing a reflection and then a translation gives us a very different figure in a different place. We have to keep this in mind on the test because um, it'll be very obvious if your figure's in the wrong place if you've done it in the wrong order. Which we don't want you to do, we want to do it in the right order. Number seven, is the following statement true? A translation followed by a reflection is equal to a reflection followed by a translation. Talk with your partner about that 30 seconds. Go. Now, just like we saw in that last example, a translation followed by a reflection will give us a very different result than a reflection followed by a translation. There's my sentence. <laughs>